Hey, what's up guys, it's Franchise923, and in this video, I wanna talk about this cool tool called Exif Tool. Um, so this is a tool that can help read metadata, extended metadata from um, different types of files. Um, we're gonna be using this to extract from a video file or an MP4 file. Um, so I have a dash cam that come, uh, sits in my car, and as I drive, it actually logs the GPS data inside. It's embedded inside the MP4 file. So a lot of um, like GoPros do this as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to extract the metadata out of that MP4 file uh, using a free and open source tool that has a, a command line option, uh, then yeah, just keep watching and uh, I'm going to go over the, the basics of using this EXIF tool. Um, so if that sounds interesting, uh, let's just jump right in and I'm going to download this. I'm on a Windows machine here, so I'm just going to download the Windows executable. And it looks like it's just a zip file. So I'm going to show this in the folder and extract this and we'll see what's inside this folder so you see we have this exif tool with a dash k and then dot exe so if we just double click this let's see what happens oh yeah we will allow this to run uh you're seeing like it's kind of just spitting out the information um the like the options or the documentation so Basically, let's just read the instructions here. It says, if you leave it with exit tool dash K, you can, uh, if you run it, you'll see the documentation. You can also drag and drop files and folders to view metadata. So let me just show you how that works. Um, so I have some MP4 files here. If I go to this location, I should just be able to drag an MP4 file all, right on top of this executable like that. And it, see how it says open with exif tool. So this is just an easy way to get the uh, metadata out of here. So you see it's spitting everything back. But we don't want to do this. We actually want to use the command line so we can get more options. Because you can see here, we don't see any GPS data. So we need to actually use the command line here. So it says or rename to exiftool.exe for command line use. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's rename this. Let's get rid of the parentheses, exitool.exe. And now I'm gonna shift, right click, copy as path, and open it up in a command line. So now, if I run that, you see it's giving us the information. So, all right, that, that works. So now we need to learn more about the command line. So I'm gonna Google exif tool documentation. And on this first page here, we see a bunch of options. So these are all the flags that you can run with the command line. And to get started, we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna use this dash EE, which stands for extract embedded. So this, if we run it with dash EE, it's gonna extract information from embedded files. So let's construct our command. So what it's gonna be is I'm gonna shift right click. We need the full path to the executable. Now we need dash EE for extract embedded. And now we need uh, an MP4 file. So same thing, shift right click, copy as path. All right, so just like that, let's see what happens when we run this. So I'm gonna copy it all, uh, clear the screen with CLS and then run it in the command line here. So now you see it's returning all this GPS information. So it's basically digging a little bit further in the MP4 file, looking for any, any other uh, metadata it finds. So you see it's spitting out the same stuff it was before, but now it's also giving us more data. So that's cool. Um, what, what might we want to do next? So something easy. So let's say you just wanted to get this into a file. We can, it's called piping it. We can just pipe it to a file. Um, with that greater than sign, and then just give it the location you want to put it in. So I'm going to actually copy this, paste it, and then just change the name here to um, exif tool output test dot text. And if we copy all of this, let's clear the screen again and run it. You'll notice we don't get as much output. 
we actually don't get any because it's all going to this text file. So now here's the text file. And if I open that, we get the same data, but just in a text file. So that's cool, but this type of file isn't really uh, like a recognized geospatial format, really. It's just a text file. So we can't like drag this into QGIS or ArcGIS because it doesn't know what to do with it. So we need to basically format this in a different format. So instead of whatever this default format is, we need to um, give it an, a new format. So the way to do that is with this dash P format file, print output in a specified format. Okay, so we're gonna go back here. I'm just gonna copy our command here. And now let's, this is gonna be the GPX format. So GPX is like a, a widely recognized um, uh, format for GPS files. So we're gonna keep the same format. Let's get rid of this. And this is gonna be our first flag after the executable. So we're just gonna say dash P. And now we need to tell it what format we want it to be in. So we want it to be in GPX. And you actually need to supply it with a GPX file, like basically a sample file for it to work with. Because right now, if you say dash P GPX, it doesn't know what that format is. So this is kind of a little tricky and I had to Google this, but basically we need to get this GPX.FMT file. So just Google GPX.FMT and go to the second uh, hit here on GitHub, not the first, this is an older version. We wanna use this version and make sure it says 10.49 or later. And this is just, it's a format file. It's just telling the EXIF tool what GPX is and how to make it. So if we copy this, we're just gonna make this file. So paste it and then just save it as, um, let's save it as, we have to save it as GPX.FMT. Actually, you might not have to, but we're gonna save it like that. And now, Where did I save that? Right here, I'm gonna shift right click, copy the path. And now instead of just gpx.fmt, we're gonna actually give it the full path to where that is located. So see, gpx.fmt. So, all right, so we're saying exif tool, use this dash P command, which means print format. What format do you wanna print it in? Print it in this GPX format. And what all data do you wanna get? Use this extract embedded to get the information. And then that's the file. So if we try this, remember, since we took away the piping of it to a file, it's just gonna print on our screen, but that's fine for now. Let's just make sure it looks right. So if I paste that, hit enter, we should see it. You can ignore these little warnings here, but you see it's coming back in a totally different format. It's this XML-like doc, uh, document here. So that's cool. Um, so now the next logical thing would be to pipe it to a file. So then we can drag it into a geospatial program like uh, QGIS. So I'm just gonna add the pipe or the greater than sign. And same thing I did earlier, I'm gonna copy the same path and we're just gonna change the extension at the, or change the file name. So instead of that uh, input movie, we're going to say um, GPX sample dot GPX. All right. So again, let's just look over this really quick before we run it. So the first parameter is the actual tool. Then we're saying dash P for print format. And then we're supplying it with the format file GPX. And then we're saying dash EE extract all this metadata from this file. And then we're saying anything that you normally would have printed on the screen um, pipe it out to this file. All right, so clear the screen again. And now let's run it, hit enter. All right, you can ignore these warnings. And now if we look in our folder here, we see a GPX file right here. So that's good. So let's just open it up with whatever you want to open it. I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code, but you know, Notepad, Notepad++. It's just a text document. So you see here, we have all the data and that's looking good. I'm actually, I have this tool called um, GeoData Viewer. 
So it allows you to work with GPX files. It actually lets you plot it on a map. So I would recommend searching for this in the extensions and just installing it because you can do cool things like view a map. Um, because it's a geospatial file, it knows how to position it on this map. Um, usually it loads a little faster. I think it's because I'm on um, a Windows server machine or something. But you see here, here is where this actually took place in the, the real world. Um, and this was just a one minute video clip. So that's why it's a pretty short distance here. But yeah, that, that's uh, how it works. It's pretty cool. And just the last thing I want to test is to make sure that this GPX file um, can be brought into QGIS. Uh, make sure there's no formatting issues with this or anything. Um, for example, if like this was missing a bracket or a, a slash like that, there'd be a syntax error and this just wouldn't work in QGIS. But let's give it a try. So I'm just going to drag that file, that GPX file into QGIS. All right, so it's it found some information. So it's there's 59 point features. So just hit OK. And there you go. That's where this took place in the real world. And yeah, that's how you can uh, pretty easily extract metadata from a MP4 file. So I know like GoPro does this. A lot of other people do this. Uh, and it's pretty useful to be able to, uh, to do this. Um, what I did, so my dash cam recorded one minute videos. I actually wrote a Python script that basically just calls this exact command right here, but it uses variables because the movie. So imagine having 3000 MP4 files. Basically what the Python script did was just looped through all of the files and ran it with this as a different, as a variable. So video one would be here on the first loop. Video two would be here on the second loop. And what I ended up with was a bunch of GPX files. So I can show you what I'm talking about here. So these were all the different days we traveled. And you can see there's a GPX file next to each MP4 file. So that was because I ran a Python script. Um, and yeah, if anyone's interested in seeing how I did that, uh, let me know, I can make a quick video. It's literally, it was just a for loop through a folder with this command being called in Python, uh, if, if that makes sense. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this, give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you want. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Hey guys, so I just forgot one thing I wanted to share. I wanted to show you how you can convert an entire directory of MP4 files to GPX files um, with one command. So I'm just gonna copy um, two more, how do you, multiple, there we go. I'm just gonna copy two more of these MP4 files to my working directory. So let me paste these. So we have a total of four MP4 files. And then I'm gonna show you the command that will allow it to convert all of them to uh, GPX. So let me just get rid of the files I don't want right now. We just wanna have MP4s here. Uh, that's cause it's open, all right, close that. Try again, okay. Keep the gpx.fmt, don't need this, don't need this. Oh wait, I thought I had four of them copied. Eh, I guess not, it doesn't matter. All right, so the command we need, it's a new command, it's dash w, so Let's look at the documentation here. And dash W is text out. So write or overwrite output text files. All right, so what we're gonna do is I actually have an example somewhere. All right, so that's what the sample looks like. So we already have dash P, dash E, dash EXT MP4, okay. So we need to add this to our command. So after we have dash EE, -E. just add dash extension MP4. This will ma basically make it so it only looks at MP4 files. And now we have to add this dash W. So dash W. And now I need to give it the, where we want the output GPX files to go. 
So I'm going to copy our normal location here. Paste that in. And we need to actually give it this thing right here. So this is basically using a variable to name the GPX file every time. So that's what this little um, symbol is. So paste that. I think it's using the file name, the input file name, and then just adding GPX to it, if that makes sense. And then we just need an out the input directory. Okay, so the input directory is... So we're going to get rid of the piping because we're going to have the tool do it for us. The input directory is that location. All right. Does that look good? Let's just double check it. So we have the executable dash P. Yep. Dash E. Yep. Dash W. There's an extra space there. Dash W. So it's basically output files, input directory. All right. So let's try this. Copy, clear the screen, run that. Okay, that doesn't look good. Oh, it's probably because those slashes. Let me try. I have a feeling it might have to do with these slashes. Oh, actually, I meant to do it on this one. Let's try this. <sighs> Why is it not finding any MP4 file? Oh, it's because I have it, they're capitalized MP4 files. All right, it's no big deal. MP4. Nope, that wasn't it. Am I giving it the right folder? XF tool example. Maybe I don't need this. There we go. So I guess I had, for some reason, it doesn't want to have an extra slash on that. So it's kind of weird. Just keep that in mind. If it's not working for you right away, it probably has to do with your paths or quotes, things like that. So now we saw what it said one one directory scanned three image files read three output files created so now if we go to that directory you see each one got this gpx file made so that's a quick handy way if you had like thousands or hundreds of thousands of mp4s and you just wanted to process all of them and make a gpx file this tool can make it easier for you instead of having to do it one by one um so let's just make sure these work in QGIS, uh, but you know, they should, but just as a sanity check, we will double check. All right, let's try this first one. All right, that looks good. Cool. Try one more just for kicks. All right, okay. Now, the, I picked some random files, so select all. They're probably not going to be. Oh, I guess they are right next to each other. Anyway, uh, that's why I wanted to share. That is, that's more useful than what I showed before, just one at a time. Uh, this is actually if you wanted to do a whole directory. But, yeah, hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching.